it's med spa monday yeah i'm so excited i love med spa monday you guys especially since now i'm doing it pre-recorded so i don't have to come in here looking all tacky after the gym <laughs> i really love it um so today's topic is one that i kind of waited until we got more people in here before i launched or released this recording because i feel like it's a question that a lot of people ask and don't get a like a good answer for it let me straighten out my camera and so i feel like it's something that prevents a lot of people from even pursuing the journey of starting their aesthetic business or med spa because it's kind of intimidating it's like you're reaching researching on this topic and you don't get a straight answer um and so what i've decided to do i'm sorry i'm gonna grab my my little paper all right you guys Y'all in my, my mess by Monday is fine. I'm not, I don't have to be all polished. So what I decided to do was um, I really wanted to give people some strategies. I wanted to provide a little depth. You guys know I, I'm an educator, so I love educating. So I want to make it less intimidating for you and then also explain why certain things are in place and why it's not so cut and dry okay so i'm gonna really try to like package that in about 10 minutes we'll see if i'm able to do it in 10 minutes but i really want you to have a clear understanding so that when you go out there and you're researching and you see certain things online you don't you won't get deterred in fact you will know okay where the source of that information is coming from and why they are saying what they're saying okay so we're going to give a little context behind that before I get into the steps. So essentially, what I'm going to give you guys is, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, five steps that you can take a variation of these steps or, you know, lean on one more than the other of, of how to find out like your state specific information. Like if you're an RN and you want to know if you can start, if you're a nurse practitioner, if you're a physician assistant, if you're um, even a doctor and you're trying to figure out and navigate this, this journey, I want to make sure that you know what systems, what is in place system wise, and then how to leverage that and use that to your benefit on this journey. The first thing I want people to understand, and I think a lot of people don't realize this, is that when it comes to setting up a med spa, okay, I say this a lot on my on this page, but it's a medical practice, right? You're setting up a medical practice. So what that means is there's a lot of different entities or bodies that are involved in determining who can own and what they can do in it and how it needs to be ran. But one thing I think that a lot of people are misinformed about, and especially us as nurses, and I know most people in here are nurses, even physician assistant and nurse practitioners, um, we seem to think that it's black and white. It is not black and white. If you are going on Google and you're typing, can a nurse own a med spot? Can a nurse practitioner own a med spot? Can a physician assistant own a med spot? You first of all, you're going to get a lot of blogs, but then you're going to get a lot of misinformation. Um, you're going to get a lot of, of no, you cannot as a nurse. No, it has to be a doctor, which is technically true, but not so much because there is a way that we are making sure we word it where it's not that we are practicing medicine. That applies to some states, especially states that have a corporate practice of medicine doctrine. But then in other states, you may see like, Anybody can own a med spa. And those states are not CPOM states, corporate practice of medicine. Those are not CPOM states where anyone can own, but you still have to make sure that the doctor is able to practice medicine without the, the uh, infringement or the, um, um, the uh, what do you call it? Without the infringement or um, meddling of other outside sources. So like a doctor has to be able to practice medicine without having to be held according to a certain standard to meet certain financial obligations and that's why a lot of states like to keep them separate because medicine and medicine you should be doing what's right for the patient period hard stop regardless of the revenue but when you bring the two together from a business perspective it can get a little sticky right so that's why a lot of states like to keep them separate another thing i need people to understand is how it is determined who can own so like first of all our state legislature is who decides like or the body, the body that decides, you know, okay, this is legal in our state. This is not legal in our state. This is what the standards of practice, not even standard of practice, because that's not the state. This is the law that's been passed. And I'll give you guys an example for the state of California. AB 890. AB 890 was a bill that was brought 
by Wooden, who is a congressman, right? He supported this bill. He pushed it on the floor. It ended up passing, okay? And essentially what the bill said is that like, hey, we need more nurse practitioners to have more um, autonomy because, you know, primary care, vulnerable populations, you know, all the reasons, right? So, but that started as a bill. So in every state, whatever it is that you can do as far as your scope of practice is decided at the Senate legislature house level okay and then it goes through the proper you know channel of you know a bill is still a bill you guys know well maybe not because y'all may be a lot younger than me but <laughs> when i was a kid we used to watch that so anyway it has to go through that then once the bill go through that so eight ab 890 had i think this was like the fourth or fifth time that it was brought to the senate floor um and, and it keeps coming back like they make modifications you know it gets rejected gets killed on the floor then it makes it back and then you know it's a long process this time, because of COVID, it actually was like, hey, I mean, you know, they were hearing. They were like, okay, yeah, we do got to do something because, you know, we need more primary people with, to access to primary care. The doctors are, you know, not going into uh, primary care. They're specializing, most of them, rightfully so, because they have a lot of student loans. So they don't want to be making $120,000 after going to school all that time with over $200,000 in loans. So we need nurse practitioners to be able to tap into this space all right so it goes through finally it passes then it lands on the desk of the governor and then the governor says i right, i'm gonna sign it or he kill it that, that's that's he can veto it right same way like the president right so our governor in this case he he listens to what people say all the different you know responses from the different um invested parties the medical boards the doctors the nurses the nurse practitioners and then he makes a decision if he's gonna sign it or not he decides to sign it now you have it signed into law now this has to be interpreted so what does this mean for the medical board what does this mean for the nurse um the brn the board of registered nursing in your state now they take that that bill that's now passed assembly bill 890 right they take that and then and it was assembly bill assembly bill senate bill whatever and then they they say okay now what does this look like for nurses and nurse practitioners and they come together with doctors and nurses and then they decide on what we're able to do using this so they interpret that right so and i'm telling you this because i want you to understand why there's so much gray it's so much gray because it's so many different bodies that has to it has to go through right so you have your legislature you have your boards your board of nursing your board medical board and then you have the attorneys now the attorneys have to interpret all of this right so that's why there's so much gray area you guys and when it comes to nurses and ownership again and i've said this before on some of my videos you have to remember to separate business ownership from practice right and essentially what they are trying to do in some states like corporate practice of medicine state which is california i'm in one of those states what they're essentially trying to do is keep medicine owned by the medical doctors they don't want technically on paper they don't want business to get involved but we all know that business is very much so involved but they on paper have to keep it keep it apart and that's how nurses are able to own because you 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 don't infringe upon the medical side because that's not your scope of practice but you can be an owner or you can separate the non-medical stuff in order to own the medical practice it's really technical and this is why i always tell people you need to get an attorney because your attorney will be able to make sure you're protected but you also have to make sure you say it right you don't want to get in trouble because you around here making people even the impression that you are practicing medicine when you're not so my point is and all of that i'm probably at the damn 10 minutes by now but <laughs> the point is you have all of these different bodies that's where the confusion happens that's why when you go online you're like okay it says no you have to be a doctor and this one says well sort of like what the reality is is if it is positioned correctly and if you have the right and key players in place no matter what state you're in you can own in fact i could arguably say anybody can own whether you're a nurse or not if you make sure you have key players in place and that you are compliant all right so here is Four, how many things I said? One, two, three, four, five. Five things you can do to find out in your state if you can own and what the statutes are and what the regulations are, okay? The first thing you, you need to do is go to the medical board. Now, a lot of people will go on the medical board website and be like, 
can a nurse own a med spa? That's the wrong question. Medical board is about doctors. They don't, it's not about us. Now in some states, the nurse practitioners are under the medical board since technically they're mid-level practitioners and they are practicing medicine. Um, but in most states, they're under the, the uh, BRN for that local state, all right? But you don't wanna ask, can a nurse own a med spa? That's not the question. You wanna find out what is the requirements for owning a clinical practice under the medical board. That's it, because it's the same rules. I cannot stress that enough. It's the same rules, the same laws, okay? You're opening, opening an aesthetic business or a med spa, it's a medical practice. It's just pretty, right? And then you have specific treatments that you're offering your clients, which are related to beautifying them, right? But hence the word aesthetics, okay? So you want to find out what is the regulations for ownership of a medical practice in your state and you can find that out on the board of registered nursing so i would look up medical clinic i would look up urgent care i would look up ambulatory clinic any of those whatever is required for those is going to be required for you right except of course you don't have to have you know it's and when I say that, I mean from a corporate perspective, not like you have to have 20 rooms or, you know, all of that, none of that. I'm just saying you have the same requirements, like structurally and the key players, like it needs to be owned by a doctor. All right, cool. You, it needs to be owned by a doctor. I'm in a corporate practice of medicine state, one of the most difficult states to own a med spa. But we can have ownership here, 49%. Even on paper, if I was to just have like a straight corporation on paper, 51, 49%, doctor has 51, 40, and the nurse has, or any other healthcare professional has 49%, they have majority ownership. So they are the ones who technically own it, right? And even in states where they have 100% ownership, like in Texas, they technically own it, but you have, there's a way, and I and I don't, I'm not an attorney, so I'm not going to give any legal advice, but I will tell you. Um, what, what they do is they position it in a way such that you're not fee splitting. So you're not, you are paying them, but you're not calling it paying them. It's all about how it's worded, you guys. And that's why it gets uh, like sticky and confusing because people don't understand. First of all, that's not our scope. It's the attorney's job to position it so that you are making sure you're not going to get in trouble for, for fee splitting or anything like that. But also, um, it is, it's, it's not us doing it it's, it's them right making sure the attorney making sure that it's correct so when you are going to these medical boards you, you oftentimes people are asking the wrong questions right all you want to know is what are they what do they require right now because the practice of medicine doctors once they graduate if they decided they wanted to go and open a practice right away they technically could just so you know they don't have to go work at a hospital. There's no requirement, just like a nurse. If we decided we wanted to open a nursing business right away, we could, we, we have a nursing license. We don't have to go and be employed by someone else, okay? So I will start there. I will look up the regulations for opening a medical practice according to the Board of Registered Nursing. I can tell you in most cases, you do not have to have the Department of Public Health involved at all. The only time they will get involved is if you're in violation. And in most cases, if you have been reported to them, it's going to either be a disgruntled patient or somebody jealous, <laughs> to be honest. And, you know, I had a doctor come into my med spa boot camp um, and he owns uh, a practice that actually provides medical directors for nurses. He's big on like collaboration between doctors and nurses to build wealth together, to be advocates for our patients, and you know, just just creating a culture of support for each for each other. And um, one thing he was saying was that um, a lot of times people don't even re like nurses and even doctors because they're not taught entrepreneurship either. They don't really realize that you know, Department of Public Health is not, their job is not to shut you down. Their job is to make sure that you're not grossly negligent. So like, in other words, you don't have a lay person injecting Botox. We see that on the news, right? We saw in Florida this happened and some other states like the wife of a doctor was injecting Botox, which is a big no, no. She's not licensed, she was not a nurse. Things like that are egregious, right? You're making sure you're in your scope of practice, your doctor's in their scope of practice, and you've checked off the boxes that you know of, then you don't have anything to worry about. And it's funny, because he, he said that to um, when he came into the boot camp, and I was like, this is what I tell them all the time. It's like, we're setting up for the worst 
my goal is set to set you up for success and the, and, and setting you up for success means that if the worst case scenario happened you have prepared for it, right? So that you have all the people in place. You have your medical director. You, if you're an RN and not a nurse practitioner, you have your nurse practitioner. You're making sure your clients, um, all new clients get their good faith exams. You're making sure if you have a team or a medical assistant that they're trained on bloodborne pathogen, if they get stuck. Like those are the simple things. Like worrying about having everything is what's preventing a lot of people, but nobody knows everything. That's the thing. <laughs> And I need people to understand that a lot of times it is a uh, trial and error in this business. It is. And and he even confirmed it like when we were talking and he was on the, um, the in the class and he was just like, yeah, like I'm learning as I go. Like I'm a doctor. Yes. But like they don't teach me this. Like, and nobody knows, but I, I'm, I have my due diligence. I have my attorneys on. I have them, you know, making sure to the best of our ability that we are safe, that we are legal. That's the best we can do. And see, that's the thing about opening a business is we take the risk, you guys. Like, it's not going to be a, oh, do these 10 things or 20 things or however many things and you're good. Like, no, it's like, yeah, do these 10 things or 20 things and like, you're probably good, Right. But as long as you're not egregious, you don't have anything to worry about. Like long as you're making sure you're trained, long as you're making sure that, you know, your staff is trained, if you have any staff, long as you're making sure that you're doing all the things, you're getting their consent, you're educating them on, you know, what the risks and benefits are. Like you have all that on the consent, they sign it. Like what else? You're, you're, that's it. That's what it takes. Um, all right, I'm sure I'm past 10 minutes. So anyway, medical board contacting them. You want to find out medical practice ownership, what, if there's any requirement. Only thing that's required in my state, for example, is that I had to send in, once I set up the medical corporation, I had to make sure I send in a fictitious business name because they like to register it under the medical board. To like any medical practices has to be registered under the medical board. That's pretty much the only thing that I had to do. Nothing else. Um... Number two, networking events. You guys, like if there's networking events and you're really truly serious about being in aesthetics, you need to be at some networking events this year. And the reason why I put that under the whole find out state specific information, because you will find, especially if they have it in your state, you will find people there who have a wealth of knowledge about your state if they're from your state, because and that, and that is the thing. A lot of these um, conferences will have just a session on legal, right? Where you can go in and you can ask your questions like, hey, I'm from New Hampshire. Hey, I'm from Montana, wherever you're from, and ask your questions that state specific. And because you pay for entry, most of the time it's an attorney. And because you pay for entry, you can get your questions answered. Plus, you're networking with people. So even if you don't even own a practice yet, you can start building relationships with people who are already in the industry. And I cannot tell you how valuable that is. I, I consider that you paying for proximity. Pay to get in those conferences and don't leave without at least 10, 20 numbers of contacts. That's what you should be doing. So that's number two. Number three is a state attorney. And in specific, a healthcare law attorney that's in your state. They've already interpreted all of these laws. So like, let's say you don't call the medical board. Let's say you don't go to conferences. Going to a healthcare law attorney and paying for like a discovery call. You don't even have to um, pay for their actual service yet. But paying for a discovery call, most of them will charge like $100 or $150 for a discovery call. It's worth it. Wouldn't you pay $150 to just find out the information you need to find out in your state, whatever is making you uneasy or anxious why you haven't moved paying 150 dollars find a healthcare law attorney in your state they've already interpreted the laws from the legislature they've interpreted them from the brn and the medical board and now they can tell you what you need to do easy right people are so i anytime it comes to me learning something i'm gonna pay an expert for sure. I am not going to sit up and try to figure it out myself. It would take me days, if not weeks, if not months. Why in the hell would I do that when somebody has already done it and it's their thing? They're the expert. They're the, they're the industry expert and I can pay them a couple hundred dollars. Pay the people so you can get some kind of resolve and decide what your next move is going to be. <laughs> and then last but not least, um, private trainings. A lot of people sleep on private trainings, but I can tell you they are invaluable. Let me tell you why. 
Because if you decide, let's just say you're like, okay, I, I think I want to start my practice, but I'm not sure. So, but I want to train. And you know, you guys, if you're new watching this, one of my position regarding training is like, the only time I suggest you train first is if you know you want to be a worker. Because one thing skills is going to get you is a job. But if you know you want to be an owner and you know you want to be a boss, you need to have business acumen you need to know learn and understand all the main core components of running a business because if you don't have that i don't care how great your skills are you're not going to make any money if you're not making any money you just have an expensive hobby and nobody wants an expensive hobby at this point in our lives right so what i love about the private training is that you have the ability to work with somebody it's usually going to be either one-on-one -on -one or it'll be like a couple people to, to the trainer or the mentor and you get to ask all your questions. And guess what? They should be in your state so that you can ask state specific questions about ownership if that is your question. My recommendation was would be finding someone who owns a practice and has the same credentials as me, right? So I, when I train privately, I go to nurse practitioners. It's, it's rare that I'll train with a doctor unless it's just like a real highly specific skill. I will go to a nurse practitioner for one because they're a nurse practitioner, but also because they have um, a different, um, in the state, they have a different set, not a different set of rules, but like there's certain other considerations that they have to have versus a doctor can just go out and be like, oh, I just used my license. I got an LLC and I set it up. That's not our, that's not our, that's not how it works for us in the state of California. So if you're a nurse practitioner in the state of California and you have a medical practice, then I know that you know the laws that it took to get there for you to set it up legally versus a doctor who doesn't take, he's already a medical doctor, so he doesn't have to jump through so many hoops right so I try to find somebody I've only trained well I've trained with some other doctors though but that was for highly skilled specialized um skills but other than that I for the most part train have trained with nurse practitioners and I and I'm telling you I'm picking their brain like crazy I already paid for the you know for the skill and a lot of times they will have like a before and then an after you know recap where you can like ask do Q&A and all that and so those are I'm telling you. So um, that's number, I think that's number four. I'm sure I went over my 10 minutes. Um, I did want to provide you guys with four events that's happening. I am not getting an affiliation. I'm just, again, continuing to add value to you guys because you are in my group and I am a firm believer. I stand on what I say. All is my goal is to get people and nurses and nurse practitioners and physician assistants and even doctors to leverage our license, monetize it so we can live the life that we truly deserve. After COVID, we all deserve deserve to live a life on our terms period hard stop so that's why i give so much value to you guys now i'm gonna give you four events again i have no I, you probably might see me at some of these because i'm like i think i'm gonna go to a couple um we already missed the Amspa Mets show that's in February next year. I think it's going to be in April. Put that on your calendar. It's a really dope show in Vegas. But the four that are still accessible, like they haven't happened yet. One is Aesthetics Innovation Summit. That's April 19th and it's going to be in Miami, Florida. So if you haven't been to Miami, it's definitely a place to go to. I used to go on my heyday, but I probably ain't been in like... I don't know, maybe eight years. Um, but anyway, they're having an Aesthetic Innovation Summer. Makes sense. Like... Florida, New York, and Cali, or Southern California, even Northern California too, are like the meccas for cosmetic surgery and also aesthetics. So it makes sense that they're having it there. So that's gonna be April 19th, Aesthetics Innovation Summit. The second one is Modern Beauty. That's it's called Modern Beauty Con, and that's gonna be May 5th through May 7th. That one is in Boston. Good time to go because um, I'm not feeling the code and I don't play with it. Um, but yes, that one's going to be in Boston. Another one is the aesthetic, aesthetic Show. That's July 6th through the 9th. It's going to be in Las Vegas. And then number four is the Multi-Aesthetic Conference. And that's going to be in the beautiful, sunny, sunny, sunny San Diego. And that one is in August from August the 2nd to the 5th. If you're serious, guys, get in on one of these events. Okay, they got one. I just gave you guys two that's on the East Coast. I guess Florida's still considered the East Coast, right? Or South or whatever. Got two over there. I gave you um, a couple over here. And you guys, there's no reason that if you're serious, 
that you should not be attending one of these events so that you can start making these connections. You will be surprised how many people are very much so like you, still very much confused trying to figure it out, um, which is why I love the boot camp that I offer because it provides like all, you know how you have all this information on the World Wide Web, wide web. it condenses it all for you and provides you with a clear strategy to get from here to here. And so I love that about, about the Meds My Bootcamp. But I hope I have added some value to this, to you on this wonderful Monday. Make sure that you refer a friend. Y'all don't gatekeep. I only leave these videos up for seven days. Share it with y'all friends. Everybody loves aesthetics. It's the soft side of nursing. Tell your friends to come on in. I do this every Monday. I'll be recording, pre-recorded, but when you watch it, please um, just give us some feedback under the comments questions you have it will help us stay on track to make sure we're continuing to add value every single week all right you guys take care and have a happy monday